What's going on guys? Welcome back to Destroyer Productions with another video. And I know, by the thumbnail and the title, you're thinking, oh my gosh guys, did he really just talk about a white YouTuber? He's talking about a white YouTuber! Oh my god! Settle down guys, buckle up, get ready, because I'm going to be talking about Mike. Street Speed 717. <laughs> Okay, unanimous. I've had so many people want me to do videos on Mike, Street Speed 717, and Parker from Vehicle Virgins. Both and Driveway Demons, okay? All three of these guys. And, you know, Mike, you did it. You did it today. You said the magic word, clickbait. Okay, after seeing Mike's video tonight, Street Speed 717, he landed himself on my very first episode of Clickbait Call Out. So I know that I've done clickbait stuff in the past where I'm calling out YouTubers and everything, but I'm actually making my own series of episodes of Clickbait Call Out where I actually find a video that has clickbait in it and I take the time to watch the video and let you guys know that it's clickbait and you guys don't need to watch it. So you can watch my video, get a little bit of perspective of what the video is all about, and then you can just whoosh, right on by that video. So congratulations, Mike, for making it on my very first episode of this. But don't worry, I'll let you explain why you clickbaited in the video. Roll the clip. Oh yeah, I'm gonna level with you, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna title this video like, something about trading in my 720S for this Ford right here, and that is clickbait. I'm not really doing that. Okay, so, I'm on both sides of the spectrum here with street speed, okay? So there is the comments in the comment section that are like, yo, go back to street racing and go back to being street speed, right? Because that's his name. People are saying, change your name if you're not gonna do anything that has to do with cars and, and racing and stuff like that. So I feel to an extent you need to cater to your audience, especially when you have a channel that's almost reaching a million subscribers. But on the second hand, like, you don't have to watch the video that he puts out. I understand that he is, you know, reoccurring a theme here with his with his truck content and his budget builds and all of his other, uh, you know, truck stuff, right? He's also into trucks. He likes trucks. He loves trucks. And I can see it from his view that he wants to put out what he wants to put out. And if you guys want to watch, you will. But his views are hovering and his subscribers are down for you know the last 30 days. And every time that he puts out a truck video or any kind of video that ha doesn't have to do with cars or a 720S, his views and his subscribers go down. Every single video that he puts out with, with a truck video or a Jeep, it all goes down, man. If you look at the social blade, it went up once he got the 720S. And once the 720S stopped appearing on his channel, it literally is doing this now. It's a wave downwards and staying like, it's just hovering. Now we've got this snip right here, which is going to be his sub count. And this is right after he put up the video of replacing his 720S with an F-150. And as you can see, it's red. Like he's losing subscribers. A channel that has a, almost a million subscribers should be growing and flourishing. But every single time that he posts a video, Mike, Every single time that you post a video that has to do with trucks, you're not listening to your audience and you're losing subscribers at a pretty fast rate, which sucks. I mean, I don't think that you're really feeling this dip every time that you make these videos, but guy, that's a fan. That's a subscriber that you're losing because you're not sticking to your roots, okay? I'm just putting out opinions. I'm just putting out guidance here that uh, you probably don't really give a shit about because you know you make a good income and you put out a lot of videos. You put out a lot of stuff that a lot of people enjoy, but there are also a good amount of people that don't enjoy the content that you're putting out. And I think that you're, you know, losing a good chunk of your core audience by putting out just truck after truck after truck after truck stuff. But hold on, Street Speed 717 has something to say to you guys. Last night's upload, or it might be two days ago, depending on when I upload this, but um, just know that like, 
I never said that I'm never having a sports car on the channel again or a fast car. That's not it at all. And you know, I get it. I lost like 3,000 subscribers, which I tell you, you know what? If people got, they got to do what they got to do. So I respect it. I get it. I feel like maybe they'll check back in, but it is what it is. Um, but just know that like I'm gonna, ha I'm always gonna have a fast car of some kind. I was just talking about you know why. I haven't been into them as much and, and where I'm gonna go forward. I guess what I should say really is I'm kind of getting out of the modified car game or at least like the, the heavily modified car game, you know, when it's 12 grand every time I take my McLaren apart. I'm sorry, uh, $12,000? 12 grand. 12 grand. To take apart a simple thing on a McLaren? No wonder Mike wants to get rid of the McLaren. Are you kidding me? Tall guy, Corey, are you hearing this? You're about to you're about to get a McLaren and you want to pay $12,000 every single time that something goes wrong with that McLaren. Bro, you better have enough money to afford five McLarens if you want to buy one. <laughs> Let me tell you what. <laughs> For a little issue and if I don't get it done by McLaren, then if I have a bigger problem, you know, they're not going to warranty it or I got to fight with them. And that's if I can even find, you know, somebody cheaper to take it apart. And, and then do I trust somebody taking apart a $300,000 car on the cheap? So Mike's making some really solid points here. $12,000 and trying to find somebody trustworthy to take apart a $300,000 car. That sounds like a nightmare in itself. And if you guys watched my dealership videos where I took my car to the dealership and had a little issue happen, um, you guys should go back and check those videos out if you haven't seen them already because you could go through the comments section alone and see how many different people have been screwed over by dealerships. And these aren't even McLaren dealerships. Like who knows what happens at a McLaren dealership. And if he doesn't want to take it there and he's talking about on the cheap, then he's probably not going to go to a McLaren shop and he's trying to find somebody outside of McLaren to do something cheaper. And holy shit, I wouldn't trust a single person to take apart a McLaren. Not a single person unless it's an actual McLaren dealership. And I have another point to make. What about people who have these really high-end expensive cars and they don't do the work on them themselves? Would you touch your $350,000 McLaren? Would you really want to take it apart yourself? Absolutely not. So at that point, does it make you less of a man because you do not want to touch your $350,000 McLaren? And then you, on the other hand, have to think about where you're going to take it because you don't trust anybody to take your car apart? Man, that in itself is a nightmare. I don't blame him getting rid of the McLaren. And tall guy, car reviews, I mean, Corey, you've got to take this into consideration, man. You're not a millionaire. You're not a millionaire at, by any chance. Neither is Mike. Mike's dealing with this situation and pfft, I'm telling you guys right now, if Tall Guy Car Reviews gets that car, it's going to be the downfall of his channel. But yeah, Mike, you make a lot of really fucking good points and I can't believe the fact that I, I have no idea that it was around $12,000 to uh, service or take care of little issues with a McLaren. So... Definitely downsize. I'm not saying to, you know, get another supercar, but definitely go back to cars. It's what you do best. And I feel like your audience definitely agrees with me in this situation. You know, do I trust them to do that? So, you know, I just, I'm done with like the really modifying stuff, I think. Um, but we'll see, you know, you guys know my channel changes a lot because I'm a guy who likes to do a lot of different things vehicle wise. And I can go from a 720S to a blazer and have fun in different ways. So we'll see, but I just know that like, I'm not only doing truck stuff and you know, and there's, there's always gonna be cars on my channel as well. All right guys, so in every single episode of Clickbait Call Out, I'm going to kind of give a grade on how severe the clickbait is in the video. And honestly, I would rate this one kind of low because Immediately in the video, he tells us that he clickbaits. He gives us a reason why, and he kind of just defends himself on the backlash that he's getting on his channel currently, which I feel is fair. He's been doing quite a bit of mundane, just over and over and over and over again of kind of the same type of content. And any kind of you know channel that has the same kind of content that doesn't have variety, that's kind of why I give you guys variety. I do some vlogs every now and then, I do some car modifications, I talk about other YouTubers and clickbait, and some comedy, some commentary, like all different kinds of stuff on my channel, guys. I'll do some gaming every now and then, some live streams, I have it all. Like I just kind of just wrap everything into one. But when you're just constantly doing the same kind of content and your channel is out, like crying out that 
they want something different and people are unsubscribing and the views are kind of just hovering or going down and then going back up and going down. It's not, it's not smart to, I mean, I'm not discrediting his intelligence at all, but it's just not smart to continue to roll with the content that you're going with because obviously those people are, you know, those, their core, their core fans, their core subscribers. And those are the people that followed you from the beginning. I've seen a bunch of comments that are like, um, I subscribed two years ago for street racing, or I subscribed two years ago for Corvettes, or I subscribed two years ago for, um, you know, classic cars or whatever, whatever the comment is, people are crying out to, um, street speed and it, I feel like he might be listening. I feel like at the he's at the point where um, it could make or break his channel, to be honest. Even though he has 900,000 subscribers, I feel like uh, there is you know a tipping point where a lot of people could just start crazily unsubscribing from his channel seeing like Social Blade because Social Blade allows people to see who unsubscribes from the channel. Well, not who, but how many people are unsubscribing from the channel on any given day or any given time. And it seems like a lot of people in chunks are, you know, unsubscribing. Like he said, he's had 3000 people unsubscribe in his video. So should he have titled this something different? Yes. And I feel like he should think about titling stuff different in the future and not, you know, clickbaiting because there's no point for a channel with almost a million subscribers to clickbait. There just isn't, especially in the car community. We don't need it. We don't need any clickbait. We don't need people to be um, you know, being dishonest about what's in the video. Although Mike does a good job of not being dishonest. He actually tells you what the video has to do with and he doesn't leave you at the end feeling like, oh shit, I just got clickbaited because honestly, you kind of just roll with the video and if you guys are watching it, you understand by the end why he titled the video like he did. But yeah, guys, I want to hear from you guys down below. So take your comments to the comment section down below and let me know what you guys have to say about this whole situation. Do you guys feel like Street Speed 717 does not need to clickbait with having 902,000 subscribers on his channel? I feel like with a channel that big doesn't really need to. They can just make whatever they want and have their own ideas and just, just roll with it. But what do you guys have to say about it? Go ahead, like I said, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys, interact with you guys. And do you guys think that clickbait callout is an awesome idea for this channel? If you guys think so, go ahead and leave it down below. And don't forget to smash that like button if you guys enjoy this video. And if you hate my face and you just wanna let me know, go ahead and leave a dislike down below as well. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel, checking out some other videos. I've got a lot of stuff going on on this channel and I plan to have a lot in the future as well. So make sure you hit that notification bell because YouTube won't put the videos in your notifications if you don't do that. So, all right, guys, that is all I have for you guys. If you would like to as well, go over to Instagram. I'm like 80 away from 10,000 uh, followers over there. It would be cool to get that little swipe up feature. So go ahead, show some support over there if you haven't already at DG Prods. Appreciate every single one of you guys. There's going to be a lot more videos coming your way, I promise. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, fam. Goodbye.